Good morning, I'm Mark Allen with Gabra.io and I'm here today with Lucas Timberlake, a partner with FinTech Ventures Fund. Good morning, Lucas, how you doing? Good morning, thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us on this bright and early Monday morning. So to start with, can you share a brief background of yourself and your work experience? Sure, so I started off in investment banking at Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, and was there for three years. After that, I joined a private equity firm that was investing in infrastructure assets. And as part of that, we were doing a roll up in the parking space and bringing in mobile payments technology to bring a lot of the businesses from being 70, 80% cash and 20% credit to the opposite. And it was through those experiences I met my current partner on the fund at FinTech Ventures, and he had a vision to invest in early stage FinTech companies that were really either filling gaps that banks were not filling on the lending side or payments that, you know, weren't getting processed through incumbent financial institutions and had a thesis for an early stage venture fund that was focused on fintech really outside of Silicon Valley, although we still look there. And, you know, we began talking and, and basically the genesis for the fund um, was formed. And so we, we started in 2015 and since hmm. then have invested in 11 companies and are focused on really what we call pre-series A fintech. And that means starting as early as a pre-seed round in a post-product company and, and working with the companies and growing with them and, and really having the goal to invest up to 2 million up and through the series A. So that's us in a nutshell. We focus on FinTech obviously as a fund name implies, but most of what we have seen recently that we're excited about has actually come from the insure tech space, which is you know relevant and highly correlated, I say to FinTech and I kind of group it into one umbrella. Yeah, and actually, insure tech, I think, is probably even more in need of uh, the tech than, than the fin. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> yeah, so, so I, I think it's very similar in terms of what large financial institutions are doing and what large insurance carriers and or brokers are doing as well. And so it's both highly regulated spaces with similar types of pain points in terms of customer experience and you know a variety of other concerns that they both have so in our view it's a very similar vertical that like i said you know group it within that umbrella of fintech and sure tech collectively yeah together so what has been your experience with remote employment uh both as an employee and now as a as a vc <laughs> yeah so it's it's interesting I would say pre-COVID, we were focusing on companies, like I said, primarily outside of Silicon Valley and, you know, gave them extra credit if they're actually located outside of the Bay Area, Boston, New York, and of the 11 companies, the majority of them are actually located out of those three coastal, quote unquote, fintech hubs that we have kind of labeled them as. And, and now I would say, you know, everything's fully distributed. A lot of our founders and teams are, are fully across the country. And we've actually done several deals where we haven't even gone out and met the founders in person. So I would say it's become an increasingly important part of our thesis. And I, I think it will continue. I mean, that said, people are also using remote development teams as well. And so the majority of our companies have done so at some point, especially to, to get started. And I know that's obviously relevant to the viewers here. So definitely a fan of it. And I think it's definitely more important now. And uh, even though there's vaccine news today, I, I think there's still gonna be need for remote work and, and excited to see how the future kind of comes out of that. Right. Well, and that actually, that brings up the next question is, is even though there is a vaccine today, you're right, it's going to be a while. Um, and what do you think is, is the future? I think people are used to this now. So it, it's a proven model after, after seven months. So what do you, how do you think it's going to go from here? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question that I haven't necessarily wrapped my my arms around but I, I think a lot of the trends that have already started to materialize over the last seven months will continue and you know i don't think you're 
ever going to fully replace business meetings, but we've gotten so comfortable with Zoom and, and all of that that I think it will be a large portion of our lives. So I don't think things change drastically in the next two years, even as the vaccines rolled out. I, I think what has already happened was going to happen with the pandemic or not in terms of mm. fully remote workforces. And so in my view, I, I think trends have just been expedited in my view that we're already going to happen and, and maybe would have taken longer without a pandemic. Yeah, I think what happened in seven months probably would have happened in five to seven years over time, but it did. It, exactly, yeah. It started started that. So um, so what is the story behind FinTech? How, I mean, you said you started with uh, someone you used to work for or, um, and, and are there specific criteria you're looking for as a VC? Yeah, so so it wasn't someone I used to work for, but it, it was who I met in a previous role, actually flying down to Atlanta from New York to visit some of the companies that we invested in with the free, previous fund. And the thesis really came out of his investment in a community bank where he was looking to do technology enabled lending, but it was difficult just given the way that the bank was set up in the regulatory environment at the time. So one of our first investments was in a company that was providing small business financing that was competing with banks in terms of time and speed to market to offer businesses capital that they wouldn't necessarily get even at a bank as well. Hmm. And so our thesis, like I said, is looking at technologies that are filling gaps that incumbent financial institutions are leaving but we're also, as I mentioned, looking at companies that are helping incumbents remain relevant versus their digitally first peers. And that's become especially prevalent when you look at the community banking space or the legacy insurance and brokerage space as well. And so that's been an increased area of focus that we've had too. Hmm. So, um, with your company, it, 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 it's yourself and a partner, and, and do you have other people in the company, or is it just the two of you right now? So it's primarily the two of us, and then we have a support staff, and including a controller that um, you know, kind of sh we share over an umbrella of of different businesses. But it's primarily the two of us doing investments from the fund. Uh, and are both of you in se separate cities? So you've basically been remote since day one. So I would call that uh, remote. So like I said, I was doing a lot of traveling between New York and Atlanta on what I call the Delta consultants flight. And mm -hmm. um, that obviously stopped for the most part in February. And we've both been in Atlanta where our headquarters and main office are, and we have uh, four investments. So it has been pretty remote though, because we weren't seeing each other in the office or didn't need to have face-to-face -face interaction every day. And you know, I, I think that continues. So we're already, already essentially remote, although mm -hmm. now we're in the same city and have had a little bit more face-to-face -face interaction mm -hmm. as, as time allows. And, and the companies that you invest in, do you, do you actually advise them that remote is a possibility? And Because it saved money, obviously, right? Is that something you talk to them about? Yeah, so, so pre-COVID, I said we were advising them on setting headquarters up outside of the three coastal fintech hubs, as I mentioned, San Francisco, hmm. Boston, and New York. And now we're still advising them to set up these headquarters, but to really think about how distributed their workforces could be. And for the most part, it's kind of a continuation, or like I said before, an acceleration of trends that are already happening going to fully remote workforces. And a lot of the hires they've made year to date have been for positions that have been outside of their principal office geographical areas. And, you know, I think that's just continued because of the state of the world that we're in today. So definitely advise them. But like I said, they're already kind of thinking about that pre-COVID and it's just kind of probably accelerated the, the hires that they've made outside of their, their principal areas of of uh, offices. Okay, and then the um, the customers that you've dealt with. I mean, did did COVID actually cause any roadblocks or challenges that you weren't 
prepared for or were because you were already were distributed was it pretty smooth so for for us as a fund it didn't really change too much and if anything like i said we we're able to operate with business as normal and we've done five deals year to date including several where we've never met the founders except via zoom and in terms of the companies it did change their businesses significantly but most of them have turned headwinds into tailwinds and that's happened in several cases so several companies were giving loans to small businesses and they quickly pivoted to processing ppp loans for instance hmm. and potentially could be processing more ppp loans depending on next administrations and and how they react to some form of stimulus for small businesses the second example was a travel insurance company we invested in um, mm. earlier this year, and they went from having a virtual complete shutdown to their business to serving Brits that were going on holiday in the summer and continuing now even during the lockdown over there. And their business has actually picked up remarkably after being virtually shut down for three months since really July of this year. And so it's been interesting to see how things have become tailwinds. And I would say kind of on a time basis, March through May were the toughest months for all the startups. But really in June and July, they started to look forward to growth as opposed to defense mode. And that's been pretty true across the board. And I don't think we're out of the, the woods yet, but there's some optimism even before the news today on the vaccine that I keep bringing up because I think it's important. Mm. And I think now they're, they're really planning for next year and, and seeing, seeing how things could shake out. Interesting. And, and do you think travel will pick up then over in 20? Because I was basically told there's not going to be much travel in 2021, but with today's news, do you think that will change? I, I think it will. I mean, you look at all of the stats and, you know, they're down across the board in terms of 40 to 80 percent off prior year figures. But in my view, I, I do think people are going to be willing to travel again. And if you looked at what happened in the UK, which is one of the countries where people travel the most internationally, that did start to happen in the summer of this year hmm. and so i would say it's too soon to tell but you know after having done a fair amount of homework on this i'm, I'm pretty optimistic that travel will rebound in terms of rebounding fully versus let's call them 2019 levels i, I do think it will take two years but i do think there will be a great increase in demand beginning next year especially as they start to roll out the vaccine hopefully Again, don't want to get ahead of ourselves uh, to the masses. Hmm. So finally, there, there's companies like Gaper that help develop, build, and scale products, especially for startups. And, there, and there's also lots of companies that do other things, you know, marketing and financial and all these other things that, you, that are done through remote companies. How important do you think that's going to be, like, from the VC standpoint going forward to, to help companies that you fund get started quickly? So I, I think it's been an important trend even before COVID, like I've said, I mean, a lot of people have been pouring money into development tools to begin with to make things simpler and remote development can make things simpler, especially from a cost and logistics standpoint. So going back to kind of one of the themes that we've been talking about on this podcast has been acceleration. So I think it accelerates trends that were already in existence and as opposed to taking five to seven years a lot of these trends became accelerated within the last you know seven to nine months so mm -hmm. definitely think it's important and definitely think it's something that hasn't just started year to date but we'll we'll just move a little bit more quickly in terms of advancement yeah so well lucas i want to thank you for your time today uh it's been quite interesting uh and today is a good day it's it's always good to start the week with the news we got this morning uh so thank you for your time and have a great week Thanks for having me. All right. Bye. Bye.